Alright guys, we're going to talk about percents, decimals, and fractions. Okay, our, this is the title of the video, Percents, Decimals, and Fractions. Our learning objective, or what I want you to know by the end of this video, all right, in the next 8 to 10 minutes, I want you to be able to tell me how you can write equivalent percents, fractions, and decimals. Okay, what I mean by that is if I give you a percent, you need to be able to write a fraction or a decimal from it. If I give you a fraction, you should be able to write a percent or a decimal from that. Okay? Easy enough. And you should already know how to write a decimal into a percent or a fraction. We talked about that in class. So I'm going to give you four examples. Our first example, I want to talk about, where's my highlighter? There we go, highlighter. I want to talk about going from percents to fractions. Okay? First example. Simply, simply enough, this is probably one of the easiest ones. You can write a percent to an equivalent fraction simply by, well, because percents are out of 100, all you have to do is write it over 100. Okay, let me give you an example. So the first thing you want to do is, like for 15%, okay, 15%, you just write 15 over 100, and then you simplify Okay, I know I can divide 15 by 5, divide 100 by 5, they're both divisible by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3, 100 divided by 5 is 20. 3 twentieths is equivalent to 15%. Okay, same thing with 22.5%. If I say 22.5 and I put it over 100, okay, I can divide by 5, I know for sure, because so I got a 5 here, and I got a 0 down here, so that tells me, laws of uh, division tell me I can divide by 5. So 22.5 divided by 5 is 4.5. Okay, 4 point, oops, let's just write that, that's a 5, alright? Don't ask me about it in class tomorrow, it's a 5. 100 divided by 5 is 20. But oh look, I can still divide by 5. I can divide my 4.5 by 5, and I can divide my 20 by 5. So that tells me that I could have divided the whole thing by 25 to begin with. Okay? 4.5 divided by, divided by 5 is 0 0.9. And then 20 divided by 5 is 4. Okay? So that's how you find that. And the last one, I have 100, 5, divided, or yeah, over 100, because once again, percents are all out of 100. So here I can divide by 5. Divide by 5. I wish that thing would write my last little dot there. Bleh. All right, divide both of those by 5. And 105 divided by 5 is 21. 100 divided by 5 is 20. So 21 over 20 is as simple as it gets. That's my final answer. Okay? So that's simply put how you come up with fractions from percents. Okay, let's look at our next example. The next example is going to be percents to decimals. Okay, so just a little bit different than the last example. So how you do this is you you can write a percent as an equivalent decimal by first writing the percent as a fraction and then dividing the numerator by the denominator okay and we know how to write it as a fraction because I just showed you okay you don't necessarily have to simplify but you can if you want to so 36 as a fraction is 36 over 100 okay you if you're going to divide by hand you would I would want to simplify okay but if you have a calculator, like I do tonight, in essence of speed and time, I would just divide 36 by 100. And you know what? I don't even need a calculator, come to think of it, because if I'm dividing by a power of 10, um, all I have to do is move the decimal to the left, the number of zeros that I have. So I have two zeros in 100, so I can just move my decimal two places to the left, and I wind up with 0.36. Okay, same thing here, 112% out of 100, it's 112%, that means it's going to be more than 1, so if I were to divide this, once again I move my decimal because of the 100, two places to the left, that leaves me with 
oops, hold on, 1.12. All right, and then finally I have 14.7%, so I just put 14.7 over 100. I divide by the 100. I move my decimal, which is right here in this case, two places to the left, Dang it. two places to the left, and I wind up with 0 0.14. Seven. Okay, so sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Next slide. Example three. I'm looking at and I'll left a little bit there. There we go. Fractions to decimals. Okay. Fractions to decimals. So that's the next thing we're going to learn. We're going to take nine twenty fifths and turn it into a decimal. We're going to take three eighths and turn it into a decimal. This is pretty easy too. Okay. All you have to do is divide the numerator all right, by the denominator. You can do it the long way, or if you're lucky enough to have a calculator, you can do it the short way. But if you're dividing it the long way, 9, let's write it up here, 9 goes inside and 25 goes outside. All right, Every time, the number on top goes on the inside, the number on the bottom goes on the outside. That is a 5. Okay, so 25 won't go into 9, so I have to add a decimal. Okay, and then I have to put my decimal on the top. It's a little sloppy, I apologize. But then 25 will go into 90 three times. 3 times 25 is 75. I subtract 75 from 90. I have to borrow, or not, not borrow from not, uh, 0, but I borrow from the 9. Okay, that becomes an 8. That becomes a 10. Alright, then 7 from 8 is 1. I can add another 0 because I have a remainder. And then I say 25 will go into 150 how many times? All right, it'll go in there six times. Six times 25 is 150. Okay, so my decimal equivalent of 9 25ths is 0 0.36. Okay, that's my decimal equivalent. I'm not going to take that much time on 3 eighths. Once again, you just need to know that you're going to have 3 inside the house, and 8 on the outside. When you divide the 3 eighths to expedite things, you would get 0 0.375. Okay? And that's how you come up with a decimal from a fraction. Last example, fractions 2 percent. Now this could be a little time consuming. Okay? I actually have a fraction of 1 fourth and 5 eighths. Okay, so how you do this is you can write a fraction as a percent by writing an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100, if you can. If the fraction's denominator is not a multiple of 100, however, you have to use division to find its decimal equivalent, and then you change it to a percent by simplifying the denominator, uh, simplifying to a den denominator of 100. Okay, so the first example is 1 quarter. All right, so the first thing I want to do is to see if, if the denominator here is has a multiple that's 100, okay? And in this particular case, we do. I can multiply 4 times 25, and that gives me 100. Then I multiply 1 times 25 to keep it equivalent, and that gives me 25, okay? So... Because a percent is out of 100, I'm already set up. 25 out of 100 is 25%. Okay? That's what works. So that's an easy way. If you could, if you could get this denominator that is a multiple of 100, you know, where you can multiply it by something to get 100, you're in great shape. 8, however, doesn't do that. Okay? So you kind of have to do it the long way. So we have to find the decimal equivalent and then we take that decimal and turn it into a, a fraction and then try to simplify it to a denominator with 100. So it's, it's a bit time consuming, but it can be done. So if we divide 5 by 8, 5 divided by 8, 5 divided by 8, we get 0 0.625. Okay? Now to turn that into a fraction, we just take these numbers, 625, and we try to write it right here, 625, okay, and I try to figure out what place value that 5 holds, and it holds the thousands place, so that means 
it goes over a thousand. I mean, that's as simple as it can be to turn a decimal into a fraction. Okay, but I can't I can't turn a number with a thousand into a percent. I got to get that one hundred in the denominator. Okay, so in order to go from a thousand to a hundred, I have to divide by ten. All right, and just earlier we were talking about dividing by a power of 10. If I divide by a power of 10, I just count the number of zeros and I move the decimal to the left, that number. So here I have just one zero, so I move the decimal one place to the left and that gives me my 100. Same thing here. I move the decimal one place to the left and that gives me my number. So my percent, let's see, we got 62.5 over 100. So that tells me my percent is 62.5 percent. All right, so I want you guys to come to class tomorrow. If you have any questions, make sure you have them written down on your WSQ. If you don't have any questions, if you completely understand this, you need to have a question prepared that we can go over as a warm-up in class.